about the future. And now they're talking very openly about River Camp, Hammock Camp. That's good. And the educational aspect on, on that 100 acres to draw trails, have signage that says longleaf pine and native species, and mm -hmm. a dozen other things along there. So. Right, we're doing a new route on the Mayor and Chairman's Paddle, which uh, starts in Langdale Park, goes by Sugar Creek if you want to get out early and get out there. That's three miles, and then continues another four miles around the, uh, you know, once you get below the Georgia 133 bridge, you're at the land that the county bought in December of uh, 2022, which is 71 acres to add to the 44 acres Parks and Rec already had to make one big nature park. Beautiful. And you got lots of cypress, cypress knees, and windy paddles uh, through there, and big oaks, huge old things, because that land has been untouched for 100 years. And just before we get to the Little River Confluence, that. that's where we plan to put a river camp. If you're familiar with the five river camps on the Swanee River, that's the model. You paddle in, put your boat in the boat rack, a couple of bathrooms with hot and cold running water and air conditioning. And off to the side, five elevated screened-in sleeping platforms with electricity and primitive camp, if you like, and a dining pavilion. And something we brought up during those uh, Zoom meetings, we were working on this through COVID. Yep. On the Zoom meetings was raised septic. Yes. On those things, because again, some of the challenges are that area floods. We know that we we, we prepare for that, and with everything being raised, including the septic, we're. Well, one thing that they do at uh, the Dowling Park River Camp, which is our most immediate model because that one is also entirely in a floodplain, is the bathrooms are on quick release, the, the plumbing, the electricity, everything, and it's on wheels. They roll it out when something's coming, and I, I, I don't think they actually have a septic tank. I think they store it up. There was another model, the entire uh, clubhouse at the Spirit of the Swanee for the, uh, the outpost um, floats. It's a boat. Mm -hmm. So it there sits go. there, and it's chained to the ground, so as, it, as the water rises, that thing just sits there with, with water rushing under it. That's a thought, yes. Uh, I don't want to do that one. That was, that well, we have to do something about the actual access to the river, because, um, well, one reason it's not at the confluence is uh, Helen Tapped from him, the county bought the land, rightly doesn't want that disturbed by a lot of people going up and down on boats. So a little upriver on the Withacoochee needs to be a floating dock or steps or something. Oh, to observation platform. Well, observation platform at the confluence, that's part of the plan. I yeah. love that. That's in her conservation plan, which she did before she sold the land to the county. Listen, what a neat lady, and I've never forgotten her name, Helen Tapp. Mm -hmm. I, I tell her story often, and the, the multiple times I've gotten to sit down with her. She's just uh, fantastic. Mm -hmm. She fantastic. is. We'll be able to tell quite the, the history of El Lost out there as well. Yes, because, of course, that's the site of Old Troopville, which was the county seat before Valdosta. When they heard the railroad was coming four miles to the east, they literally picked up all the buildings and moved them four miles. So it's hard to determine exactly where the streets and buildings were because you know, they can't have gotten every horseshoe and every nail. A little archaeology will help pin that down. It would be neat to get in there. All right, so we've got a chainsaw paddle coming up tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. I'm um, um, joining them out at Langdale Park. You've got the mayor and chairman's paddle on March 2nd. Again, right. free to everybody that wants to drag a boat out there, borrow a boat, and come along for the fun.